Because like, you don't, I mean, you're seeing it more nowadays, but you're also like not seeing as much as you as, as you'd still hope to see. But like seeing what you and your brother did on like, because I, I started following you guys on TikTok first, and I'm mm -hmm. like, these guys are like, they're doing something really cool and like the geeky nerd pop culture realm that isn't common in like our community. No, but it's really nice to see. Like it's really cool because you don't know who you might inspire along the way, right? And that's 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 all it takes. That's all it takes. Uh is that that one person to inspire I me mean, last week we had a message come through and to be honest bro I'm, I'm not the the person about the, the 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 big views and the likes and you know we yeah. we thrive we live in a society now where we thrive ourselves on how many views and you know how many people following we had oh. a, a message come through uh that said that your podcast inspired me to get into things i love again uh, which I was ashamed of when I was younger and then went yeah. through addiction. He went, the, the person went through addiction of, uh, uh, of, of drugs and coming out on the other end and finding a podcast where two brothers just geek out and basically talk about life, movies, comic books and artwork. And that message alone put me and my brother in a state where we're like, we, we genuinely do this for the love of it but getting to see yeah. two brothers just talk about life and, and you know we, we don't talk so about the comic yeah. stuff yeah yeah because you don't know a you know you don't know if someone's going through a so you don't know like how much your content or like the work you're putting out can really resonate and touch them like on an emotional like side because even me like i have i've had a few younger like artists like up and coming artists like hey like because of your work like it's it's kind of pushed me to want to do more of like things that i like like pop culture anime superheroes because Growing up, yeah, you, you like these things, but they weren't really considered the cool things growing up. Mm -mm. Like, it wasn't cool to be a nerd. It wasn't cool to be an anime geek. But like with us, we we stuck through with it because we're like, yo, it doesn't matter what we like. If we like it, we like it. It doesn't matter if it's cool or if it's seen as like, popular. Because nowadays we see the MCU, we see the DC movies as terrible as those may be, but we see how popular superheroes are and like pop yeah. culture. Like, I, I, I tell my friends, I'm like, because like, I, I grew up on Dragon Ball Z. So mm -hmm. that's my as you can probably see a pretty big Dragon Ball Z. Yes, yes, back. yes. <laughs> um, so I will say like, I think anime now is more popular than it was when we were kids because A, social media, we have phones, mm -hmm. we have the internet, we can talk about it more in a, in a, in a community setting. And it's just like, every because even like some of the athletes that I've been like, and like the celebrities that I've been very fortunate to work with, the biggest common thing that I've seen is they, they have the same interest in pop culture as I do. Whether you're a basketball player, a hockey player, whatever, they either grew up on the same shows or they know about it some way, somehow. That's right. So I'm like, it it truly does bring people together, like the, just pop culture in general. And like I was talking to another friend yesterday. Um, he's like, anime, like people always thought, oh, it's kiddish, it's childish. But if you really look at some of these properties, they're not for children. They're, they're they have mature storylines, they have mature characters, and like they're pretty violent and they're, they're quite emotional like i'm not sure if you're like really into anime but like some of these shows kind of like get you going yeah no anime I, i'm <clears throat> so i'm gonna expose my age most of the guys in the podcast know i am 41 years old now uh... no way no way <laughs> dude i thought you were I, I, okay i guess how how do you think i am i would say you're in your mid-20s dude oh thank you i just turned 30 <laughs> <laughs> i'm much i thought you were uh... my age I thought yeah, you were like, yeah. I, uh, a lot of people. Yeah. Yeah. No, <laughs> that's a, well, my little one keeps me, keeps me busy and keeps me on my toes. But uh, I think generally us South Asians, we just age delayed. Ah, uh, uh, yeah. Like, we got to think our genes. <laughs> we do that. Uh, but, you know, I grew up on Akira. I grew up on Fist of North oh, Star. So nice. I grew up on the older Dominion Tank Police, uh, you know, Gundam. Uh, so those are the animes I grew up with. My brothers, my younger brothers that are in their thirties, uh, you know, Naruto, Dragon Ball Z. Uh, yeah, the, yeah. There's, there's. So I've gone, been able to go through this generation with, with that, that side of anime. Uh, but yeah. me having a love for the, the, the original mangas like Akira and, and Fisher North Star, they, 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 yeah, they still take my funny. breath away now. It's funny because even Akira, like it, it was made, I think it was made in like what the 80s, mid to late yeah. 80s. 
That's it's right. still to this day, almost like over 30 years after, it still holds quality. Like the mm -hmm. animation, the art style, the direction, the story, the mood. Like you still haven't seen anything similar to that, even nope. almost 40 years after, right? So exactly. like that was one that was actually the first animated movie that I've ever seen. As a kid, it's a pretty dark movie to watch, but it was Very. so it you can see that like even like like I said before, the 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 in like the the reach that it has in pop culture, uh from music videos to other other animes to just the general style of that artwork it's 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 still so prevalent and, and uh, yeah because i used to watch you know like dragon ball z i mean i, I the, the, you know the more mainstream i guess pokemon digimon i used to watch naruto mm -hmm. Yasha. i recently got into um cowboy bebop yes seen cowboy bebop? yes it's yes. actually really i mean the live action adaptation wasn't entirely as bad as people think it is i i, I quite enjoyed it because i watched it after i watched the anime okay and it was pretty good I think it was really good. I think, I mean, as you know, man, we live in this uh, cancel culture sort oh, of yeah. reality where the views and everything have to play a big part of what we enjoy. Uh, I watched Cowboy, Cowboy Bebop as an anime first, which I absolutely love. Yeah. And yeah. watching it become a live live, live action, I'm, I'm really grateful that we get to get this content because, as you know, when we were younger, it was animation cartoons magazine comic books yeah uh, we're now getting real life visuals of yeah of, of products that i love like uh and i don't know man some people are gonna that's the thing we're, we're, we're too separated we haven't become one yet we're too separated when it comes to things I, like that i also think it just comes down to like you you need to the people need to understand that it's an anime like the original mm. anime like you can get away with anything mm. as you know, as outrageous as the settings are, as as crazy as the characters may look, you can't necessarily always translate that into live action. Like mm. you, you've probably seen the most recent Ant Man trailer, right? You yes, saw, you saw yeah. you, you saw Modok without his, you know, without his mask. Yeah. Like, people are still complaining. It's like, bro, that's literally what he looks like in the comic books. He's just a big <laughs> floating head with tiny baby arms. Like, how do you think that's going to translate in live action? Like, it's going to look a bit silly. No matter mm. what, that's why I added that the, like that that mask feature where he yeah. kind of covers, because that makes that that looks more I guess like fluid with the rest of the design. But like if if you're gonna see a big floating head and like tiny arms floating on a chair, it's gonna be a little ridiculous. Yeah. So like I find the big thing is that we're getting all the things we want nowadays, all the live action adaptations, all the crossovers, but people are still so unthankful because it's not perfect. It's not exactly like the source material. I'm like, even some of the comic books we like. The source material isn't always the best, or it's not always the most realistic to translate. Mm. Like, no, look at all, most of the MCU movies; they're not direct adaptations. They, they're they're either a combination of a multiple storylines mm -hmm. or a loose adaptation. Like like Infinity War was not an exact, you know, a copy of the Infinity Saga from the comic books. Like there wasn't no. Lady, there were certain elements were left out, but they mm. just kind of made their own way to make it so work. And I think people. I, I was surprised when Cowboy Bebop got cancelled. I'm like, I thought that was really, it was pretty good for what, what it was worth. Really good. Really good. The visuals, yeah, uh, the Wing Chun martial arts, I loved it, man. It's oh, just... Even the cinematography, like, it was, I think they had a lot of, like, slow motion scenes, which, which were really good. Like, they were really well done, but again, like, yeah. the other thing that people hate is, like, oh, why are you casting a different colored person? I'm like, bro, it's it's literally fiction, man. Like, what are you talking Like, you can do anything with it. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's 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 a tough one. It's the it's 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 a it's a weird time that we live in because I'm like as bad as a movie or a TV show could be, uh, yeah. and I'm I suppose I'm me and my brothers we're not we're still grateful for the content. Oh you yeah, know, I'm I'm getting to see this. I mean, uh, but before this, we've gone right into a conversation, yeah. <laughs> and I haven't even done an intro for this brother yet. So listen, yeah. guys. Again, welcome to our first Geek Out session of 2023. Uh, me uh, being very uh, grateful. I know we've been trying to sort this out for ages. Uh, we've been following each other on TikTok for a while now. Uh, I want to introduce you guys to Rahman Hamid, uh, an amazing artist. Uh, you're based in Canada, right? I'm based in Canada. Yeah, the cold yeah. north. <laughs> <laughs> the cold north. I mean, and yeah. And we 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 this is the first episode we've actually just really just jumped into conversation and I and I love that I'm I'm happy and glad that I can I can do that because some some episodes do start off very uncomfortable but probably because 
Uh, you've been doing like social media with your artwork for a while now, and uh, yeah. I, what I what I what drew draw drawed me to your work was like I've always been a pencil paper artist, so you upscaling to large canvases, spray cans, and the rest of it. I mean, what? How did you start off your art journey? Oh man, I love it because every podcast or any every kind of like interview I do, it's the same story all the time. But like yeah. I always have new details that I forgot the last time. <laughs> so I mean like to put it simply like my art journey started when I was a kid like when I was like maybe five six years old my mm-hmm. mom she taught me how to paint she taught me how to sketch she does a lot of like Mendy art like henna art yeah yeah she also does a lot of like hand embroidery work so she, I got my creative side from my mom and I guess I got my business side from my dad because he had apart from his career he had you know halal meat shops he had donair shops shawarma shops mm-hmm. so I kind of got like a little bit of like, okay, you can be creative with multiple things at the same time. Mm-hmm. But to answer your question, yeah, I was taught how to paint and sketch at a very young age. And I kind of just stuck with it through there. Um, and like oh, throughout my whole life, whether it's elementary, high school, junior high, you know, university, I've always been known as that creative person, like the person that can draw, the person that can sketch the best. Um, and yeah, I just kind of stuck with it. Like my, my like I, I, I guess I could say I'm very thankful to have the family support system that I have given you know South Asian community and what the expectations normally are right yeah so growing up my parents were always like whatever you want to do whether it's become a doctor lawyer yada yada or become an artist or something different just put your full effort into it you know don't um don't don't do it with very little effort do it with, with the intention of being the best at what you want to do right what well, even if it's even if you want to just you know clean washrooms for a living and there's nothing wrong with that it's like just do it with the intention that you're going to be the best at it so mm. I took that from a very young age and I was very thankful that I had that support. And I'm like, hey, maybe this art thing can work out into something else, right? Um, and then yeah, fast forward to like university, I was, this, this is like what, 2012, 2013. I really started to see like more traction towards the work itself. Like people were, were finally, I guess, recognizing the art. Uh, mm-hmm. I never took formal art classes. I never went to art school. I went to university to study psychology. So I did have the intention of becoming a doctor, but then I saw like, everything else kind of like taking off as it was. So I'm like, you know what? This is my, my my true calling. I love creativity. I also love science. Like I do have a scientific background, but I'm, I love kind of combining the two at the same time, so, you know, yeah. whenever I can. But yeah, long story short, it's just like 2015 is when everything kind of started taking off. Like the first big opportunity I saw was in Las Vegas. Mm-hmm. Um, so me and my brother, we had a clothing line and then we, we were, it, it was an invite only show. So we were invited a, a, a probably with a, maybe 30, 40 other brands like total so it was a huge deal for us is the biggest opportunity at that time so we had about 200 t-shirts about 30 hats and about 30 paintings because i'm like everyone's booth is going to look the same it's going to be either t-shirts hats clothing shoes apparel right so yeah. how, can we, how can we differentiate ourselves from everyone else so my brother's like well you have 30 paintings here that you're not selling because at that point is more like a hobby that i was doing i wasn't really focusing it from a professional point of view so he said, why don't we just take your paintings and like, it'll just grab people's attention naturally. So I'm like, okay, that, that makes sense. So again, this is our, at that time, it was our biggest financial gamble, like on a project or an opportunity. So I'm like, it's either we tried and we succeed or we tried and we fail, but I'd, I'd rather try it nonetheless, because you know, you don't want to just say no and then think, oh, maybe I should have done it. So we went, it was about, it was about a week trip to Las Vegas. We, so we had all of our clothing, we had every, everything set up at our booth, but then we, we had all the paintings kind of making a barrier between like both left and right side and like the front of the booth. So like no matter which angle you were looking at it, you saw artwork, whether it was a Dragon Ball Z painting, a Mickey Mouse painting or anything superhero related. So that was a really like good idea to say the least because people yeah. were just drawn to the booth naturally. They're like, oh, well, you're, you're bringing artwork to a fashion trade show. That's different. And then from that show, we realized, you know, not just from like a, a profit point of view, but just from like what people were ra- like gravitating more towards, it was the art more than the clothing. Mm. So from 2015 onwards, I kind of focused more on the on the artwork. And during that trip, we actually met with Floyd Mayweather, the boxer. Um, we went to his personal private gym. It was in La- it's just off the Las Vegas trip. I got him two paintings. Uh, and then the next day he he invited us back over to meet one of his business partners. I'm like, who, 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 who could his business partner be that he'd want us to meet? Like he, yeah. he by himself at the time was more than enough. So we go back the next day, like right before a flight back to Canada and it was Warren Buffett. I'm like, <laughs> Warren Buffett, what are you doing? Cause like, cause my brother's a type that he can talk to anyone. He can, he can spark up a, a conversation with a tree. Like that's how much yeah. he, that's how much, I guess, confidence in the like, like social skills he has. 
Um, so he just goes up to Warren Buffett. I'm like, bro, you can't just walk up to like the sixth richest man on the planet and like shake his hand. But then I'm like, maybe you can. I don't know. Maybe I'm just overthinking it. So then he, so then he's like, hey, Mr. Buffett, we have some extra hats left over from our trade show. We would love for you to have one. So we have a picture, and it's all on my Instagram. Like, so if, mm. if no one, if no one ever believes any of the stories I tell, everything's documented, archived <laughs> on my Instagram. So if you want to scroll to like 2015, you'll see everything. Awesome. So there's a picture of me. My brother, so like my brother's five years older than me. So like we, he mm. was, he used to like kind of take the lead on like these opportunities, which is great. Um, and I just kind of like did my thing and showed up. So there's, there's a picture of me, my brother, and Warren Buffett, like with his arms around both of us, as if we were his kids. Like he was talking to us as if, as if like like how me and you are talking, like super casual, super like nice and friendly. And then there's another picture of him wearing one of our hats. I'm like, awesome. that's the richest, I'm like, that's the richest head that we've ever had a hat put on. <laughs> and it was it was crazy. And then from there we we came back to Canada. We're like, we have to we have to capitalize on this. We have to keep this momentum going. And you know, alhamdulillah, like the last ugh, almost eight years now, it's crazy how time flies. Because I was yeah, I was 23 when that happened. So now like I just turned 30. So yeah, seven and a half years. Um, it's just been, you know, just kind of building off the momentum, you know, it's like a snowball effect, right? Mm-hmm. You you get one great opportunity, you get one great client, you post about, and then that's the power of social media. You post about it, and people see it, and then like if if that person, if that individual posts about it themselves, it's like, and I hate to use this mentality, but it's like a, it's like a herd mentality where like their followers will be like, okay, well if they like this artist or if they like this person's work, then I have to follow them too. It's just you know you want to follow what your favorite celebrities are following, right? Or you want to like yeah, yeah. Thing. It's that sense of connection where it's like we share something similar. So yeah. yeah, it's just they post about it, you get more traction, you get more followers, more views, and then it just you don't know where the opportunities can come from from there, right? You don't know the way I like to put it. Like I, I'm a firm believer in timing, so you don't mm-hmm. know who's going to see your piece or your work at the right time, whether it's a company, a brand, or an individual. Like you don't know what people see and what they like, right? And exactly. yeah, like it just from there, like I've been just yeah, it's just then I got married in 2017, and then we had our first daughter in 2020 right when COVID started like it's been it's been a whirlwind but I wouldn't change it for anything it's it's been nah, that's amazing amazing crazy. amazing yeah. yeah absolutely amazing amazing no mashallah dude that is uh an amazing story uh, uh amazing kickoff and then the, the rest of it as you said it's a, the snowball effect everything else kicks into life and gear marriage kids family but oh, you're yeah. still doing it. That's the main thing. You're still doing it. And as you were saying, we were saying at the beginning of the podcast was, you know, we're, we're, we're coming from uh, an Asian background where it wasn't the usual. You said it there, man. You were studying science. You know what I mean? So like, that's like Jim Lee's story. When you hear Jim Lee's story, when I met yeah, Jim Lee, he yeah. was telling me, you know, I'm, I was going to be, you know, a doctor as well. And then I'm, yeah. I went into yeah. doing some art classes and, you know, and he's nice. He's running DC now, so it's not. It's nuts. It's absolutely crazy. So he's you're right, guy. You know, like because like, I read his story, like this is like a like a like an abridged version. But wasn't it where he uh, placed a bet with his parents, where it's like, give me a year and I'll make it in the comic scene, and then if that's not, right, I'm like, cool. I'm like <laughs> that's crazy. And again, like some parents will just say no. Yeah, we're, we're also very lucky that we had understanding, you know, reasonable parents that are like, hey, you know, we'll give it a shot. If it works out, it works out. If it doesn't, it's not the end of the world, right? Yeah, my like, dad found it hard, though. My dad found yeah. it really hard. I was in IT, so I was studying IT. IT. Okay. Yeah, yeah, so I was, I was, you know, I was going to be that technician guy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was going to be the technician. Thing. You studied IT. You probably still know a lot about it, right? A little bit. Not as bad, because now my what I do for a living with the art and uh, uh, I work in marketing, so yeah. uh, it's... It, Having a bit of that knowledge does help when it came to it comes in moving. Handy. Yeah, when moving to digital, because for yeah. me, I found it very hard from moving to paper, pencil, using ink and paint. To oh man, I'm trying to draw on a digital screen <laughs> and yeah. uh, learn Photoshop and things like that. So yes, it, it it did help because I already had a head start in it. Uh, but yeah, my dad he he found it really hard, man. My mum, I as as you did, you 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 got your creative side from your mum. I did as yeah. well. My mum, again, yeah. she did embroidery and she did yeah. uh, fashion uh, when she came to the country, when she came to the UK. So I yeah. get that from my mum. Yeah, mums uh, have that sweet spot for everything we do. Uh, and yeah. like, it, it, even <laughs> my dad, like I, it, took, it took a little bit of like convincing, but like 
when I think when your parents see that you're truly passionate about it and that like it's actually like working, then they're like, okay, this makes sense. Because obviously, like you also we also can't blame where they come from because no, of course they, not. Of they course were taught something. They were shown different things. They were, they come from a completely different generation where these things were not common at all. And even no, no. now, it's not as common, but it's it's slowly getting up there, right? Yeah, it is. It is, and hopefully, brothers and sisters like us. Are pushing uh, our, our ourselves out there in the world to 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 be oh, seen. Yeah. I mean, I think the I think when it kind of hit my dad was I met Michael J. Fox at the thirtieth anniversary oh. of Back to the Future when he came to London. Uh, yeah, it's nice. the first time he's come in a long time. I'm a big Back to the Future fan. Uh, I worked on this thirty year anniversary piece with him and yeah. Doc Brown, uh, like the anime, like it was like an animation characteristic uh, cool. piece I did. And the universe works in great ways because he's coming to a Comic Con, and I was like, "Yes, Michael J. Fox, Christopher uh, Lloyd in the same building. I'm booking my tickets. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Go on the website. Website crashes within two minutes. Tickets sold out. Yeah. So I was like, okay, this is not happening. So I go on other websites to see if I can find tickets. People are selling these for two grand, three grand a ticket, oh, and yeah. I was like, ah, uh, you know what? I, I can't. I can't even justify that cost." Yeah. Uh, and then I, I think it was two weeks before the show was going to kick off. I bought tickets to go to the show, but I won't. I wasn't. I weren't going to be able to see them. All the tickets were completely sold out. Yeah. I have a friend of a friend who works in a magazine who follows my Facebook page, and got in contact with me and said, "Listen, dude, uh, I've got some tickets to go see Michael J. Fox and Christopher Lloyd. Uh, did yeah. you want to share one of your art pieces with them?" And I was like, yeah, that's cool, man. How, uh, like, how much? And he was like, no, no, you're going to go in with the magazine. And so, I was like, are you are you joking? But I hate to, I hate to cut you off, but did yeah. you, like, when you're initially trying to buy the ticket, did you have the intention of gifting them the art piece or showing it to them? Or did you want to just go strictly to meet them? No, I wanted to gift them the piece. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, that's good, that's good. Yeah, that's I wanted awesome. to gift them the piece just to say thank you for being a part of my, my childhood that's yeah. coming to my adulthood because... <laughs> yeah. uh, it's, uh, I've got to meet a lot of artists in my journey where I've gifted them with my artwork to say, you guys inspired me to get back into art again because uh, yeah. I stopped art for a long time. I stopped art for like almost 15 years, you know? Uh, and after my first marriage, after my first divorce, it all came back to me. And yeah, the, lo yeah. the love for uh, comic book culture, pop culture, what the movies did to me and the artwork. But so where, where I was originally, so that happened. Yeah. And I got to meet uh, Michael J. Fox of Christopher Lloyd. And it was like, the universe works in such a strange, amazing yeah. Yeah, way. I'm a big believer. And like, obviously, like, given our faith, what we believe in, like, we always have to believe in timing and plans. Yeah. I'm a big believer that, like, sometimes the things that you want the most in life might not work out the way you want it to, or might not work out at all, because there's something bigger and better waiting for you around the corner, right? Yeah, that's right. You know, like, how right. we, like we ask for the things we want, we work towards the things that we want, but we should also like understand that there are things that are better for us out there. So this opportunity from this friend of a friend was so much better and bigger than the initial attempt that you made. Right? Yeah, that's right. And, and because like, I have a very similar, like I have a similar, very similar story with LA Comic Con because I was just in LA Comic Con in December. Yeah. Um, first, at a, first time attending a Comic Con as a fan and first time actually showcasing at a Comic Con. Nice. So, I'm not I'm not gonna drop his name quite yet. I'm because I'm waiting until <laughs> next month. But it's a Marvel, it's a, a Marvel actor, and if you know what was happening at LA Comic Con, you might know who I'm talking about. But we'll keep it a secret. So okay. I'm, I'm, actor was having a sign like an autograph session like a signing booth kind of similar to like what you, i guess michael yeah. j fox lloyd had i couldn't get the tickets because they, they weren't really sold out since i couldn't leave my booth because i was the only person there so if you leave your booth at comic-con you're lo you're losing sales you're losing money <laughs> yeah, that's Dude, right i tried to go like i tried to sneak in like a half an hour break but i couldn't i just couldn't make it it, it didn't make any sense like time wise so okay i didn't make it happen it didn't work but then in the back of my head i'm like you know what if it's meant to be it'll work out some other way Right. If I'm meant to meet this person, it'll work out some other different way. And, you know, lo and behold, beginning of the new year, um, I, d I just commented on one of their posts on Instagram and they DM me after. And, and you know, next month, inshallah, I'll be making a mural for their house, a custom mural, which includes their the <laughs> hero that they play. So I'm not going to say who it is, but I think you might know. Or you might. I, I don't know, like, I'm 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 working it out. I'm working it out, but I'm very okay, excited. Uh, yeah, so, bro, so very I'm not, excited. 
it's, it's again like because because he because i always have a list like or like yeah like a list of a couple like clients or celebrities i want to work with in the in the year so he was on my list for for 2023 so i'm like okay checked off so now i'll because because my list includes him i'll tell you mm. most is on the list um the rock ryan mm-hmm. reynolds um and tom holland and I know oh. Tom Holland is like next to impossible to like com- get in contact with, but you never know. You never say never, right? Of course, so. of course, of course. Never say never. Never. Even and, with the Rock situation, like, yeah, never say never. He interacted with me a year ago on Twitter. Uh, yeah, sorry, that was 2021 when DC Fandom was happening, and he released some uh, footage right. for Black yeah. Adam. I put yeah. it up. He retweeted it with a message, and I was like, "What the fuck?" Yeah, because <laughs> like, kinda... yeah, and that's why I love social media because, like, with Instagram and TikTok and Twitter, it's more personal. Like, they're actually mm. using themselves as opposed to having like a like a social media manager, uh, for the most part. So, like, you don't know when they're looking at their screen, and you don't know when your message or your comment is going to pop up and grab their attention. That's right. That's right. You just you you just don't know. Just just try, and if it works, it works. If it doesn't, you know, move on. It's not the end of the world, right? No, it's not. It's not. It's not. It's. I mean, I don't want to bug anybody. Uh, and and I didn't even tag him in that post. Uh, yeah. yeah. And I I actually genuinely thought it was a, a PR team or a, a fan page, and yeah. I didn't realize till a couple of hours later was, I was like, oh my my Twitter's like we just started the Brothers Geek Out podcast. Twitter page we were never on social media yeah. me yeah. and my brother only done this just on YouTube and we just it was a way because he lives abroad it was a way for us to connect yeah oh nice so I thought you guys that's how same. that's how we that's how we started the podcast six years ago yeah. he moved to Hong Kong uh and we you know with family and anybody who lives abroad friends or family yeah, you, you, you lose touch yeah you lose touch you know a call from every day becomes every week to every three weeks to every month and then next thing you know six months so what it was consistent was we're such a close-knit family was like yeah. let's just talk on skype we'll record yeah. the calls and then my brother said just pop it up on youtube see what happens and only yeah, last yeah. like two years ago we started a twitter and instagram account and that's where the interaction happened with the rock i read the message a couple of hours later after it was retweeted and was like, oh my god, I've got like forty four thousand views on here. What's going on? And I was yeah, like, oh my yeah. god, he actually watched the video. Yeah. Uh, and then you know, lo and behold, exactly a year later, I'm getting to shake my hands and party with this dude. It was a it's surreal, crazy. unreal moment. It's it's again, it's it's all about timing, bro. Like you honestly don't know. Um when certain things can pay off because because again like i like to believe that hard work will always pay off eventually mm-hmm. it might be now yeah. might not be tomorrow might not be right away but it will eventually always pay off because if you're putting in the work if you're putting in the, an honest genuine effort mm. you, the hard work will never go unnoticed it's gonna pay off one way or another like someone's gonna see it and they'll be like yeah let's make <clears> this happen or like no of course. Will, like, align the way it should and it's it's also just about having faith, bro. Like I don't I don't want to get too deep in this podcast, but like you just you kind of have to have those, especially nowadays. Like, yeah, if you have faith in like the things you believe in, then why why wouldn't they pay off? Why wouldn't they work out? Right? No, of course, of course, and and there's nothing wrong with getting deep, bro. I I, I love yeah. all my guests getting deep. Uh, I think that's the one good thing about me and my brother. We got so deep on the podcast when we started inviting guests on that we want that freedom to be able to share people's thoughts on hair yeah. without being scared of what they have to say, because I know we're in a culture where it's quite difficult to say things and do things. But I mean, luckily the listeners that listen to this, they, they like yeah. it. They like it. We yeah. got some good news the other day that uh, on Apple podcasts in South Africa, we are number one Oh nine for TV and films. Oh, wow. That's awesome. That's huge. That's that's like unreal. And like my friends yeah, were like South crazy. Africa. And I was like, bro, I just, you know, you put yourself out there. It doesn't matter where in the world yeah. somebody's going to enjoy it. And the fact that we were at that part of the charts. Yeah. There's millions of podcasts, millions like, of like podcasts. You're, you're right there with the top one. You're pretty much top 100, dude. Like that's all. That's <laughs> a, it's it's, whole, it's, it's like... that's, that's consistency. That's love for what we do. Uh, as yeah. we always tell most of the listeners, we don't get paid for this. We we genuinely, like, absolutely love pop culture. 
like my my dad maybe not like it but he's the one who inspired us because those 80s movies ignited oh, yeah. this love for pop culture yeah. and my uncle who was an artist as well who played a big part in my comic book journey uh, yeah. inspired us in that pop culture world even though they still say make sure you don't tell relatives we go in cinema to watch this movie <laughs> <laughs> yeah i know it's, it's crazy because I, I i remember my earliest film experience was it was either Ferris Bueller's Day Out with my parents, surprisingly, mm-hmm. or it was Titanic, because every every Daisy South Asian family loves Titanic. <laughs> for some reason, I don't know why, maybe it's the tragic romance, maybe it's, the, I don't know. But yeah, I still remember, like, just watching Titanic, we were just, because we, we, we would always have family movie nights. Mm. Like, sometimes it'd be, like, movie, like, L- Lagan, or, like, you know, Munna by MBBS, but, like, we'll also, yeah. like, talk some, like, Titanic, some Ferris Bueller, just to kind of keep it fresh. And that, yeah. I think that mixture of like the Western and Eastern cultures kind of helps shape who I, cause I'm a big, I'm, I'm an, I, 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 I like to think that I'm a nice balance of both. Like I, I know my culture. I know where I come from. I know what I need to know. Um, yeah. My, my Urdu isn't the best, but I, I can, I can survive on it. <laughs> like my wife is there to like translate for me because she, her, hers is <laughs> per- perfectly fluent. Right. But like I can live there. I can go there. I can, I can visit. It, it's fine. Like I know where my people come from. But I also know the the, the culture, society, because I I was when I was born and raised in Canada. Like I know where mm-hmm. I grew up at the same time. But having parents that kind of introduce you and allowed you to see a little bit of both of it, where it's yeah. not just oh, you can only focus on the Western side because that's where we live, or you can only focus on where you come from because that's who we are. Like if you find that perfect balance, it allows you to have interests like pop culture, superheroes, movies, uh, but while also knowing okay, this is what you know Ramadan is all about, or this is what mm-hmm. Eid's all. This is what we're. This is what our belief system is. Like I think that's a, and kind of going back to Miss Marvel. That's like exactly like exactly what they did. They showed the not just the American Muslim experience, but like the North American, European Muslim. Because I'm sure, like yeah. no matter where you're from, boy, girl, Pakistani, Indian, you know, Bangladeshi, or anywhere, it's gonna be the same experience. Your, your parents mm-hmm. are gonna say the same silly things. You're gonna have the same cultural expectations. What will people, you know, the whole what will people say kind of thing, and like sneaking around and like kind of like hiding what you're doing and like even if it's nothing bad right it's just it's just how it's been growing up right yeah, so think, yeah. like although it wasn't the most popular show and like the most well received like overall and i get that because it doesn't connect with everyone but for us i was just like yeah i'm, I'm loving this like i'm loving the references i'm loving like because because my family's from lahore pakistan my mm-hmm. like lahore and karachi so that's i mean they were most of the show was set in karachi yeah. And I'm like, oh, this is really cool because like, that's where my family's from or that's like where, where we have relatives. And I'm like, they're showing a side of comic books and just like a, a side of like just our actual society that people don't see all the time. Just like how Black Panther is so huge for, you know, the African-American community. Just like how Shang-Chi was huge for the Asian-American community. Miss Marvel was our was our project for that. The, we're like, that's okay, right. People are hearing Urdu. People are hearing Islamic references. They're seeing a mosque in an MCU project. They're, they're, they're seeing Shalvar Kameez. They're seeing, you know, like, <laughs> they showed Eid, bro. I think that's like the second or third episode. It's like the, the main setting was Eid. It's like an yep. Eid celebration. Like, I've not, like, I, like, there's certain times where I had tears in my eyes. And I'm like, well, I mean, why am I crying over this? Like, but then I realized it's, like, it's, it's that emotional connection that th- this is your people. This is, it, it, exactly. it wasn't. The one thing I told my wife, because like she she's not really into Marvel, she's not really into like pop mm-hmm. like, the, like superheroes, but being married to me, she she's she's slowly getting around to it. So <laughs> so I made her watch Miss. I'm like, if you're gonna watch anything with me, it's gonna be Miss Marvel. Like screw the Avengers, screw Spider Man. Yeah, you're gonna watch Miss Marvel because we have daughters too, right? So I'm like, I want yeah. them to see. Them up. So the biggest thing for us was it wasn't it wasn't a watered down version of our culture. It wasn't like forced. It it was actually authentic. Mm-hmm. like pronunciations like what certain things meant the fact that they use terms like jinn i'm like what <laughs> like when i heard that i'm like what <laughs> we're talking about jinns okay <laughs> but yeah was, was, and that's the thing that that's that's that perfect western eastern balance and they showed that with kamala khan that she has her pakistani roots but she also has her american roots she has american mm-hmm. friends, um but she also has that balance between it's, it's that it's that identity crisis right really. like am i more western or am i more you know from back home but i think if you find that perfect balance between both why can't you be both right exactly exactly i mean that show proved and 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 yes it wasn't for everybody but yeah. for me you know to see a brown person in the mcu 
oh man it was emotional and 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 having a daughter as well knowing that she could see somebody like herself on the screen oh now, that's yeah, a big absolutely. important key thing because when i was growing up if it wasn't bollywood movies i wouldn't see anybody else like me on the screen well i mean even if you did it, it would be the scientist or the terrorist or the cab driver I'm exactly like, exactly like, we could we, we exactly we other things you know <laughs> like exactly i mean I, it's a weird i've been having a uh, i had a twitter uh, what's the word? Argument. I might as well say an argument. I've had. A, I'm having an argument on Twitter with uh, certain somebody who does. He didn't like my review for Babylon. Oh, okay. All okay, right. and I can understand this movie has mixed reviews, but I'm a big fan of Damien Chazelle. He's his work for La La Land and Whiplash are absolutely amazing. He has a yeah. passion for cinema. He loves music. He loves acting he loves scenery he he's amazing at what he does and this movie you know follows a, a journey of five creative artists in the movie industry in the 1920s and you know you're going from you know people that suffer loneliness in that job uh, being a drug mm -hmm. addict uh, racism uh, a lot mm -hmm. of racism there's a lot of reference to racism and I think that was the argument we were having online like I live in a world where racism still exists that's what I was, oh. that was my whole point. Because yeah. I think, because me saying that it was a great film, that I went past the racism part, I didn't. I lived that every day. Because yeah. when somebody looks at me, they will look at me as he's a Muslim, he's got a beard, yeah. uh, he's reading the Quran on the train, you know. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. You know, so like, you know, I say Alhamdulillah when I sneeze. It's yeah. going to be a part of my life and I, I won't let it distract me. We're going to see it in Hollywood movies all day long. Yeah. Uh, but the I was trying to tell the guy on online that I live with racism every day, dude. And I'm scared for my, you know, I'm always scared for my family members. I'm always scared for my little girl, what she's going to go through. And, you know, mm -hmm. the harsher realities of what's going to happen. So I didn't want to tell the guy that, listen, I, of course, I understand the racist the racism that was in the movie but that's what was happening at the time that's what Damien was trying to say that you know people of color that were getting into movies had a hard shitty time and I think the guy that you're kind of not beefing with but like discussing this with on Twitter he kind of proves the point of the movie yep it's exactly, like, exactly like, what are that. you like are you missing the point like <laughs> um <laughs> that's that's the thing it's like even like it's it's so relevant now it, it's i don't think it's ever gonna truly go away it's just more like how how people kind of react to it. even like with black panther the first movie the second movie anything with miss marvel like you see the comments on social media you see the comments yeah. that people, even if they're just being trolls they know that these certain comments will spark a com like will spark a reaction they'll spark a conversation so whether whether Chadwick Boseman was still around and like he was the black and people would still make dumb comments either way. It's like, oh, it's not that good of a movie, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, bro, it might not be a good movie for you. Cause like with me, when I first watched the first Black Panther, I enjoyed it. Like mm. I, I didn't think it was like the best Marvel movie. I thought it was I thought it was entertaining. But then when I saw Miss Marvel, I'm like, wait, I get it now. Like I'm like, because exactly. that was they they that's their culture. That's the, that's the things that they like, you know, the viewers of that movie. Can relate to just like how the viewers of miss marvel are. like well okay that's that's our sh you know that's our shit right because mm -hmm. exactly I, I watch a lot of youtube breakdown i was like new rock stars is probably, mm -hmm. probably like my channel and, and when they were breaking down the episodes they missed a bunch of things i'm like again like i i don't i don't blame them because they're those are things that only we would get right exactly so like, when they're i think they're talking about gins they're talking about like they mentioned garachi for a second well i'm like okay some some things were there but like they could have missed like captured so many more you know easter eggs yes uh, but that's right i'm like it's not their culture they uh, you can't expect them to get it like they're gonna do from the super superhero side of it which is what they, they did a great job with but mm -hmm. you can't expect to understand the pakistani the muslim the south asian side of it because that's just not who they are so same no. with black panther i mean <clears throat> there's a lot of, well it was groundbreaking and it was absolutely groundbreaking um but like for me like i thought it was a great movie but like I, obviously it didn't hit me as much as like a show like miss marvel did because of obvious reasons so then when I watched that, I'm like, yeah, no, now I get why people were like absolutely losing their minds over black the idea of Black Panther because it, it's mm. such a huge step step forward in the right direction, right? Exactly, but, exactly. And and Miss Marvel is that as well for us. Like, you know, we're gonna get Miss Mar the the Marvels later on this year. Uh yeah. and 
just just you know the family dynamics in it you know yeah it, it just connected on a different level like yes I teared up plenty of times you know yeah. when when yeah, when dad it, came in the room as Hulk and you know, you know that's me yeah. man that's me and my yeah. daughter you know yeah, she's literally. gonna be embarrassed of me when she grows up she's gonna oh, see all of these videos and be like dad man how you put yourself out there like that <laughs> And like so, even just the music, like every because I know Moon Knight kind of started that theme where it's like with their outros, like the first few episodes were like the, the Arabic music, the Arabic hip hop, mm-hmm. like the Arabic house music. But then Miss Marvel took it to the next level where it's like actual like the Buck Sunny songs that we would grow up on that our parents even I saw the I watched the first episode with my mom and she was like, Wait, what the hell? I know this song. I'm like, I know, like I know <laughs> you know this song. And like, I don't know, it's just like, I'm still getting kind of like goosebumps right now talking about it. It's just, yeah, like you said, that's that, that's you and your daughter, the way like Butter Hulk, Chorta Hulk. And yeah. like after that show came out, we're like, okay, Halloween's around the corner. Like we got to get a Miss Marvel costume for it because Aya is our eldest daughter. She's two and mm-hmm. a half now. And I'm like, she's going to love it. Like we couldn't find, everything was sold out. I'm like, no, no. Because I'm like, I don't want to do Captain Marvel because that's not the same character. Like I want to do Miss that's Marvel. That's right. That's right. But the thing I loved about her costume, even like the final costume, like it was all like, meaningful it was all purposeful like very, very like the actual like bangles were like were family <clears throat> rooms, which, which we see a lot like you know nani dadi giving the grandkids mm-hmm. right but this time the jewelry had cosmic powers to it and like the shawl that she re- wears around her, her i think it's, a, it's her it's her way it's just a dupatta i'm yeah, like okay that's right <laughs> like, and like the fact that her mom was, was like for her to come out and tell her parents that i'm a superhero was like the equivalent of a like a South Asian kid telling the parent, "I don't want to be a doctor. I want to be something else. I want to be a creative. I want to be. I want to be an artist." And the fact that they accepted it, right? Yeah, exactly. And then, it, 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 she, because because like when when she wanted to tell her her dad and brother, they already knew. And then she's like, "Oh, you guys already know." And like, I, it kind of felt like she was thinking more. Like she's she's kind of thinking too much about it. Like how we sometimes find ourselves in situations, especially when we're younger. But then when you really you know when you take a step back, you're like, you know, what? I should have just told them from before because they're fully understanding, or they're gonna be they're gonna come around eventually. Um, but it's just, again so many moments that just kind of hit with you, right? You're like, mm-hmm. that was me, or that's 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 i i kind of I, I definitely relate to that or that's how my kids are going to view me or whatever the case may be right so yeah <laughs> and I'm, I'm sure with you you can probably relate because i i fully i'm fully indoctrinating my children into like the way of the nerd life like i have this marvel <laughs> key. it has it's, it's it spells out marvel across the chest but like in each letter is a different hero yeah so, so i'm like who's this She's like captain america who is this iron man and for spider-man she, she always does this like the actual kind <laughs> And then she calls um Scarlet Witch just witch because like Scarlet's a bit <laughs> and then she does this for vision because he has he has a mind stone. Oh, so, so I'm like, cute, yes, like I can I can point out these characters to her and she's only two and a half and she knows them, she's recognizing them. And like yeah, no. in a few years, I'm gonna take them to Comic Con. I'm gonna dress up with them. I'm like, look, this is I'm not gonna force you to like it, but if you like it, you like it. I'm just gonna mm. show it to you right i'm gonna show it to you yeah exactly yeah i i've been like that through alara's journey she's gonna be four tomorrow yeah uh and she's seen me do the artwork she's seen my collection she looks at my books and like you know daddy yeah. which who's this who's that and yeah. like uh my funko pop collection that's where she's learned most of her characters so yeah. she looks at the funkos oh they see oh, this she... <laughs> they see this and they're like they, they, they just want to put it on they just want to put it on and they see, yeah. I, have, I, have, I have the hat, like I have Mjolnir as well. Um, yeah. I'm not going to touch Mjolnir because you might actually hit each other with it. But <laughs> again, same thing with you. They, they see, I'm just going to show you a quick little, like a... Yeah, I yeah, guess. go for it, man. So this is like the digital workstation, like all the sketchbooks, the paintings. Nice. And like you said, Funkos, right? I have yeah. all my Funkos, my DBZ figures, as you, as you can tell, I'm a huge fan. And yeah. like the girls, the girls always go towards this Pokeball. As you can see, there's a <laughs> there because they'll yeah. throw it on the floor. But again, like in a casual non-force, there's a Miss Marvel piece right there. Yeah, awesome. So yeah, cool. so like, they they see these things around them, and they're just like, and again, apart from being bright and colorful, which is very stimulating for kids, mm. it they learn something new. Like, oh, who's this daddy, or like, who's this character? Like, what do they do? Yeah, no, that's right. They uh, she asks a lot of questions now, man. She's at that <laughs> age now where I'm reading books to her, and 
making up you know i want her imagination to be big and wild I, 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 no hold backs and you know whether she goes down the path where she likes pop culture she does if she doesn't same thing yeah. I, i'm gonna take her to her first comic con this year i'm gonna cosplay yeah. as logan and you know i had okay. a dream okay. before yeah and she'd be laura i had a dream that uh before she was born that i went cosplaying and i had a daughter and yeah i was cosplaying as logan so that dream yeah, that's cool. is becoming a reality slowly so like you know i wanted to see the world uh, yeah uh, you know both uh you know to me uh and my my brother she's seen her uncles fully emerged in it <clears throat> even yeah. when you know getting you know she doesn't know who the rock is but you know screaming out daddy's met the rock daddy's met the rock you know yeah, it's exactly. those little things that that yeah. that really kind of make it worthwhile like we i always say it's not yeah when when they're old enough to know who these people are and then when they look back on these pictures and videos of like oh dad you did really cool things like (laughs) 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 exactly i want them to do cool things as well i want to leave back uh i've I've realized like you know my my dad always talks about uh you know name on a legacy you know, whatever your yeah. granddad left behind, whatever you can do to leave that name behind as well. But legacy of of fun, you know, have a good time. Legacy, I know we uh, live in a stressful. I like that legacy of fun because it's so easy to just be stressed out all the time. Mm. And if if you put yourself, if if you put your kids in that position where it's like you can only be one thing and yeah. one thing only, it really it really just shuts off every other like avenue of interest. Not even like a career opportunity, just like avenues of interest, right? Because I yeah. know people from our you know Pakistani Indian background they they they've completely shut out certain things that they used to love as kids or when they're younger mm. simply because you know it's not part of their it doesn't line up with their career or it doesn't line up with like what their parents like say bro what the heck like I'm not like I didn't I'm not a doctor but I still love like look I'll show you right here like mm. I have a bunch of these like, journals like they're like sketchbooks and like journals like I have like three four of them that are like packed to the brim with like science anatomy astronomy like i'm not a doctor i'm not a physiologist i'm not an astrophysics or physicist but i still love these things yeah. you know and when i see people dropping interest because it's not my career or it's not my nine to five it's like so why can't you just like multiple things why can't if you genuinely <laughs> like it can it can just be a passion project or it, can, it can just be a passion that you don't you don't have to make money off of it all the time that's not what no, exactly you it's not it's not about making money so it's about getting to do things you you love and enjoy i mean like my brother my brother says it clearly like you know he works on a wall street journal he i still i I can't even he does a big job he basically looks after europe and asia he's got a long title that i could never remember (laughs) but his passion in martial arts and pop culture have yeah. always stuck with him it doesn't bother him and he doesn't care what people say yeah it's something that i love and enjoy yes i do my work yes but i get to do the stuff i love so if i can train and do karate and kickboxing and whatever uh-huh. and i get to watch the you know kang join the mcu universe <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm i'm in it all the way it's all about the journey uh all about the journey i'm 30 years old and i have a pokemon card in a case so i mean <laughs> what does that tell you like do like people i think it's either one or the other you can mm. have both like you can have both or like if you can love your job you can love your career but you can also love your passions and interests even if people think oh they might be a little childish or like grow up they know what do you mean grow up like i still hear that which is weird like i see so i still see people come and think oh why do people like superhero movies they should they should they should grow up i'm like bro superhero movies are probably the biggest like you know franchise you can go into as an actor and as a director these, yeah. these are life roles and it's just pop culture it never dies you know no it like, doesn't it doesn't it doesn't i always get it, you know always get it. my dad even says it you still wearing superhero t-shirts it's like yeah. dad these are never coming off i'm always gonna wear it <laughs> it's, uh, crazy cause, but it's-, <laughs> it's crazy to think what's gonna happen the next year because your daughter's turning four my my daughter's turning three in march I'm like, mm. what's their MCU going to look like? Or what's their next franchise that they're going to follow look like? Or that's going to be around? Because because if you think, like, it's, it, I'm getting a little way too philosophical here. Because, like, <laughs> 100, 200 years in the future, are people going to look back on the MCU and all these stories as, like, biblical types of, like, characters and stories that people follow? See, you know, like, that's, this is, is what... I, <laughs> I, I, I have this conversation with my brother, and I tell him, yeah. like, you know, it is. It's going to be, like, you know, the the the... <laughs> 
the biblical movies of the future. You know what I mean? They're going to look it's, back at this in a hundred years time. <laughs> and these awesome adventures they went on. They saved the universe, but people might lose the translation that it was all fictional and not actually real. But then people can start debating, oh, isn't that like how religion is anyways? But then that's just a different rabbit hole you want to jump into, right? So Oh, yes. Oh, yes. That's a massive <laughs> rabbit hole, dude. Because that's, yeah. that. you know, I, I, I went through a point where I used to think like that before my faith came yeah. back to me. Yeah. Because I, I genuinely felt like, you know, is this all made up? Is this just a way to control? But that was yeah. that's a long time ago. I can I still ask those questions, but I still have my faith now. My faith is the, the strongest it has been ever. You know, I I think it's good to have these questions too because it shows that you don't just. Again, this is getting like a little off topic, but like, so like, right. I'm a firm believer in like the things like in our faith and like the things that we believe in, because mm-hmm. um, I see it like like in front of me, like in in my life, like you know how beneficial it is. But then, yeah, there's always moments where you question certain things. And I think that's good because if you question things, it opens that opportunity to learn something new. That's right. right? That's right. So if you question, why is this like this? Do some research or ask the right person and they'll tell you. And then you'll learn something new. You might take that new knowledge and implement it into your day-to-day life. And especially after having kids, man, like your priorities shift so much. Like the second mm-hmm. I was born, um, she was born middle of COVID, like right when everything shut down, like March 2020. Um I'm just like, okay, everything I do it used to be for me and my like, you know, me just like as a as an entrepreneur, then it used to be for my wife when we got married, now it's for my kids. So mm-hmm. if anything, they give me even more reason to keep pushing and like keep putting out the work that I do and like to keep seeking these opportunities because it's not just for me anymore. Mm-hmm. But it's also like, like when you just have like, obviously like, we all have those moments where you just say, like, okay, like is this is this enough or is this gonna pay off more than I or is this kind of like the the peak of it or like whatever the case may be, but it's like when you have that faith, it kind of grounds you where it's like, yeah, don't worry. This is just the beginning. Like have, mm-hmm. have faith in God, have faith in Allah. And like, I, I personally find whenever I think too much about like projects or like clients, nothing happens. But when I just kind of let go and just say, like, you know, just do my thing, just like put full faith into it. I've seen opportunities come from places I couldn't, I can't even imagine. Right. Mm-hmm. I, I feel like the more you force things, the less they, they actually happen. And the more you just kind of let them be, like they'll happen in ways that you can't even dream of you know no. and yeah i think i think we all have those moments where we're like okay what is this though like why do we have to listen to that but then say like, and the beauty with our faith bro like there's literally passages in the quran that mention details about like a woman's pregnancy i believe or like details mm-hmm. about like planets and the stars and this is thousands of years before like modern science ca- caught up i'm like that's if, right if that's not, like there's, there's, I, and I'm completely paraphrasing here, but like, there's this one hadith I think that mentioned like the moon being split in two, mm-hmm. right? And then I think recently, like not not too long ago, scientists discovered that the moon has like cracks in it and like the same type of locations. I'm like, you know, like, <laughs> so, so so when you see things like that, you're just like, I don't know, like you shouldn't. It, it's easy easier said than done, but like, <clears throat> don't worry, you know, things things work out. Things always kind of like things always end up where they need to be right because everything's as we believe in is pre-written right pre-written no yeah exactly you're right what's meant for you always come to you and what isn't simply won't so don't worry exactly exactly but then 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 it kind of goes into the nerdy side of things because we're all see big like mcu fans does the multiverse exist and if the multiverse exists do they all believe in islam like do they have different religions do they believe in god like you know like Hmm. Yeah, then it's like that's just like maybe my 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 fiction side kind of getting the best of me, but I don't know. It's <laughs> I like to go off on tangents, bro. Like about religion, about science, about just like because because you know even like the, the 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 universe we know is so massive, right? Mm-hmm. But then there are things that we're definitely not meant to know or that we haven't discovered. But then it's like if there is life out there, if there are other parallel realities, as they say is it the same as what we have or is it complete do aliens believe in a lot you know i don't know right like, like i'm just getting it's I'm true just, it's oh. true it's it's like because like my brother he believes in the multiverse he he, he yeah, yeah he, he, he he believes there's different timelines and universes that I you know do even, even the simplest thing like if i didn't take this podcast today i'm like there's a branch timeline where i did take the podcast or there's a branch <laughs> timeline where i didn't take the podcast exactly that he sees it that way because there's going to be it's decisions isn't it i think it's from uh where is it called uh you know what 
it's gonna bug me now. It's from <laughs> uh Justice League Unlimited. I can't remember which animation it was, but there was uh, a crossover. I think it's called Infinite Earths. And there was a crossover crisis. No, not crisis. I think that cartoon was called Infinite Earths, and they had a two different versions of Batman. It was Owl yeah. Man, and you had Batman. I think yes. James Wood played. Oh, the movie. Yeah, the movie. yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was it. And it, he says that you know each every decision that we make yeah. can cause different multiple bro branches in the universe of. If I did that, if I didn't do that, or you went this yeah. direction or that direction, so I still I I loved I love that I love I love that sort of uh, mentality that it, there could be you know there could be a it universe could. where I didn't go back to art and yeah. I just continued working and worked in IT and uh, or worked in retail job you know anything could have happened but and, and I because like, I got married young I got married at twenty five so I'm like what if there's a timeline where I didn't talk to because my wife's name is Aisha. We we we've always been family friends. Like, what if I didn't talk to her? What if I didn't like? You know, mm. What what if? It literally, what if? Right? Like, <laughs> <laughs> but that's the thing because I do. I can go on hours and hours like talking about this type of stuff, man. It's it's insane. No, de- so, look, dude, we you know, definitely. <laughs> I'd love to get you back on the show again and 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 share yeah, your man. thoughts. But I know both of us have uh, family lives to to run and I don't <laughs> want to keep you too long. Yeah, but I, I, man, I, I, I'm I, grateful I, that we made the time and you came on, bro. So I, I'm, I'm 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 really thankful for that. Uh yeah, but before 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 you leave, uh because usually I ask most of my guests like, you know, uh something that helped you along your journey to get to well, we're still getting there on your journey. Yeah. So, like, yeah. what is what if you had anything to say to the listeners that get that want to be creative or in the creative field already or finding it hard? I mean, what is it that what's your thing that you kind of your go to quote or something that yeah, pushes you dude, forward? And I think I've already mentioned a few of them. Like, you got to just keep putting in that honest work, put in that hard work. You have, you have to stay true to yourself. Stay, you know, you have to have that faith that it's going to work out. It's going to work out because if you don't have that faith in yourself, then what's the point, right? Mm-hmm. It's not, like, it's not an overnight thing. You know, a lot of people think, oh, like, like you're, you're crushing. I'm like, yeah, like I'm doing like, I'm, I'm where I am, but like, it wasn't overnight at all. Like I told you, like I started in 2015 professionally. That's right. That's almost, that's almost yeah. eight years ago. It's just like, yeah. truly believe in what you want to do. Put your best foot forward, have faith in, you know, whatever your you know belief system is, right? Just have mm-hmm. faith that, everything will work out because again i'm a big believer in the law of attraction bro like you put you, mm-hmm. you put up positivity into this world you put up good energy you'll get that back in you know in in, in an in an in an abundant amount and you put out negativity and you know we've seen first time with certain people like on social media that you put out terrible things and terrible things often happen or like it's just not well received right no, um totally. I, again it's good energy just staying faithful in yourself and like in whatever you believe in it's being humble, bro. Like, doesn't matter how successful you are, mm-hmm. as fast as it can all come, it can go by just as quickly, you know? <laughs> and that's the biggest thing. Like, you can't think you're better than anyone. You can't think because your only competition as a creative is yourself, bro. Like, yeah, exactly. You don't want to think, okay, I'm going to be better than this person. No, you have to be better than your best version. Like, I think there's a Jay Z quote where it's like, may the best of your todays be the worst of your tomorrows, meaning like <laughs> your tomorrows are going to be so good that they'll be considered your best of right now right but i don't know like i'm going i'm kind of ran, rambling but you know just just stay faithful no. in your way. stay safe stay true to yourself believe in the process trust the process and just you know, have fun with it bro like because like you say it's not about the destination because all these fun things happen in the journey because mm-hmm. the destination i think is just you know we die right because exactly we're still gonna, we're exactly. Still gonna keep doing it. we're still gonna keep doing all, all these things until we can't do these things anymore so that the journey is exactly. always going on it's just be be open to new 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 things new experience new knowledge um and just don't be afraid to ask questions you know no exactly that exactly that dude where can we find you on social media i'm going to put your links in the description yeah. and in the podcast description but where can we find you where's where's your main oh. place where you put oh. up everything i mostly post on tiktok and instagram it's mm-hmm. at ramon meet studio so i'm not going to spell it out but because i think you'll just put it you'll put the link on so yep. uh, in case anyone gets the spelling wrong, like it'll be there. Um, so my main, like, I post everything on Instagram, time lapses, paintings, mm-hmm. all my projects. Uh, same with TikTok. I just started a YouTube channel, same name. I have like 30 followers or 30 subscribers. So, you know, 
not not monetizing off of it quite yet but you know we'll get there go subscribe guys go subscribe go subscribe <laughs> yeah. i'm gonna put the links all in the description you'll see it on the yeah. video uh yeah yeah it's all it's all the same name so it's, it's easy for everyone to follow um no, but i appreciate awesome. you having me uh, i appreciate you making time after like what four months of planning <laughs> um and bro like I, I i'd love to do this again whenever you want no no definitely i think what we should do is after ant-man and the wasp comes out we we can have a discussion yeah. dude i'm down quantum I'm a down. quantum mania breakdown between us two that'd be I'm awesome down. bro i mean if your brother wants to join it i'm more than happy to have a three-way you know chat yeah it, yeah right? let's do it let's um, do it we'll do that man so uh i'll keep we'll keep in contact definitely but uh from from me and my brother i mean he couldn't make it this time around but oh, uh, a massive thank you rahman for, for for jumping on the podcast man uh and, and and to the listeners you guys out there you heard it believe in yourself uh trust the process be humble trust me be and humble and trust one me more it, thing. It, go on. one more thing it's got to be good to people you're good to people that that positive karma will come back to you in ways oh yes happen. you always have to be good to people I'm but, trying to remember yeah. the pers- person's name who said, uh, what, what did he say? What did he say? His name was Kihu Kwan. Hopefully I said that right. That's data Ooh. and short round yeah. from Indiana Jones. Yeah. yeah. He said at the end of everything, everywhere, all at once is be kind. And oh my God, it's so important. Be kind, be kind. Easiest thing to do. And it's honestly the funnest thing to do. Just be, be, be a nice person, you know, simple as that. Yeah. Exactly, exactly awesome bro well thank you again um i know it's like what 8 p.m for you it's it's 1 p.m for me here so again you're in the future seven hours <laughs> <laughs> yes i am yes i am thank i'm you. in the future but bro massive thank you again yeah, uh have a wonderful day man we'll, we'll catch up soon quantum mania talk 